Sambodasa Namo dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodasa Namo dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambodasa Good evening, everyone. <coughs> Right view is very important. Mm. In many sodas, uh, the Buddha said that the right view comes first. So right view arises because of right understanding or true knowledge. So the true knowledge or right understanding is nothing but wisdom. So according to uh, Chula Vedana Soda, Majjhima Nikaya, Soda number 44. So the right view, Sama Deity, is added into Wisdom Group, Panya Group. Right? So I think if we understand in such a way, so we will understand the importance of right view or right understanding. <coughs> For that reason, uh, some scholars, they, they translate Sama Deity as a right understanding. But actually, which is not very accurate. Uh, so right understanding me, the wisdom. The right know, right view me, uh, how do you say, the, based on the understanding, the view, you know, the perception, you know. Our perception is the right. <laughs> but closely, closely related, you know, with the right view and right understanding. <coughs> So we are learning uh, Maha Sata Rizika Soda, Majjhima Nikaya, Soda number 117. So in that Soda, according to that Soda, right view can be divided into two. And also right intention also can be divided into two. In that way, each of the eight factors can be divided into two two kind, eight factors, the noble eightfold path, not the other two. So the other two is the right knowledge and right liberation. Right knowledge and right liberation always are uh, supramundane, supramundane, only one, only one. But uh, the ten factors in the noble eightfold path can be divided, divided into two kind. The first one is called mundane right view lokiya samadhi lokiya samadhi so mundane right view is shown with the word accompanied by things saswa in the soda partaking of merit and ripening in the acquisition actually Ripening in the acquisition is a technical term. It means continuity of five aggregates. Ubadi vipaka. Ubadi me vipaka and reset. So here, continuity of five aggregates. That's a reset. So we have a continuity of five aggregates. Here, this is called the mundane, mundane right view. I think we're steady, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit. So actually, when we talk about Nibbana, we learn uh, four or three kinds of things, right? And uh, sensory things. So when you see, when you hear, smell, touch, and taste. So these are sensory things, Kama Sawa. Kama Sawa, right? So when you uh, you have a right view at the same time it accompanied by things. So when you when you see something you know that it is impermanent. But even though you know that right view, right? Knowing is a right view but accompanied by things. 
So sensory tell me when you see, even though you know you still have attachment or craving to it. You hear the song, you know that the song is impermanent, nature. <laughs> That's the right view, but accompanied by tains. So for that reason, such a right view is called mundane right view. <laughs> and partaking of merit, <laughs> partaking of merit. So that means ponya bhagya, ponya me, uh, good deed. Normally, when we do dana, so you want to have a good deed, craving, you know. Then some people want to have a, a good rebirth. So that me craving for next rebirth. So when you do good things, you know that doing dana is good, and keeping precept is good, meditation is good. That's the right view, right? That's the right view. But when you do dana and keeping precept and meditating, then you have a craving for a good rebirth, or even craving for happiness. You want to be happy. For that reason, you came to temple, and you meditate. So that means you have a craving for happiness, right? Happiness is good, but compared, when you look at Torah view, it's not good, right? Wherever you crave for, any expectation is not good, not good, when you look at Torah view. But uh, of course, you do dana and you keep precept and you, you meditate with the craving, with the craving that if I do this, then I will have a good rebirth. If I do that, I'm very happy. So these are together with the taints, you know, together with the taints. You have a right view. Dana, sila, bhavana are good. It's a right view. But when you do that, accompanied by taints. In other words, accompanied by craving. So such, so such antipathies, such a right view is called mundane right view. Because your right view is accompanied by taints. And also partaking of merit. You want to get married. You can you, you come to temple. You want to get married, right? You want. There's a craving. Craving. It's very set up point, you know? It's very set up point. It's a mundane, you know? It's mundane. Suppose uh you come to temple, you think that you're very happy. There's a craving. A very set a type of craving. And when you come to temple, you're not happy. <laughs> then hatred, you know, anger come in, you know. Because of you went to uh, partake of merit, you know. You think that you will get married. You crave for merit or good deed. You think that you accumulate good deed. And you give away something to poor people, poor people. You think that you you crave for merit by doing that you will have a good deed, right? Good deed. So actually, you understand that giving to poor people is right. That is right view. But your right view is accompanied by craving for good deed, right? Craving for good deed. But it's good. But some people crave for fame and popularity by giving poor people, right? You have a right view regarding with the dana, but you have a craving for fame or reputation, even for craving for good deed. No? Such a one is called mundane right view. So for that reason, when you do dana, you should give with the generosity and loving kindness and compassion toward the res uh, receiver, recipients. That will be the, the right way. So if you have a, if you do dana with the compassion and loving kindness, so that there, there is no craving, right? There's no craving. So that is a, the way we do dana, right? When you keep precept, you refrain from k 
killing and stealing and telling lies. So if you think that by keeping precept, you will get married. That is called partaking of merit. Hmm? Is a company by craving. But you keep precept, you think that killing is not good. If I refrain from killing, then uh, the sentient beings, living beings will be uh, safe, right? Very safe. Uh, you refrain from stealing, thinking that uh, the owner of property uh, will not be suffering, you know, will not be suffering if I do not take it, right? If I do not tear line, if I do not tear line, uh, the listener will not be, uh, how to say that, uh, uh, when the listener um, will not be, will be, ha oh no, will not be unhappy, you know, will not be unhappy if I do not tell lie. Like th these are the right attitude. So here, what I, uh, what I want to say, actually the soda, uh, Mahasatta Rizika soda, mention mundane right view with the two, three what? Number one, accompanied by taints. So we have a three type of taints, karma sawa, sensory taints. So we have a cribbing for senses. And bawa sawa, uh, craving for existence, taints of existence. We want to be born in a another existence. So that is second one, uh, bawa sawa. And next one is the awaita sawa, the taints of ignorance. You do not know, you know, right view, right things, as a right thing. So ignorance is in not knowing good in uh, good things as a good things, a bad things as a bad things. So these are the three things according to many sodas. But uh, in some places in Abhidharma, four things, right? Another thing is at that uh, wrong, the things of wrong view, the things of wrong view. So here, the point here is, uh, so the soda mentioned two type of uh, right view. Number one, mundane right view. Second one is a supra mundane right view. So the first one, uh, the soda mentioned with the three watt. So our right view, if your right view is accompanied by taints, that will be mundane. If our right view is partaking of merit, so that means if we intend for the merit, so you do dana thinking that you will get married. That's another type of craving, you know. Then you keep precept, thinking that you will get married. Ponya, ponya. Very subtle point, you know. Normally, we can we can uh, how to say identify or we can classify two type of Buddhist. In normal Buddhist, when they do something thinking that they will get something, you know. For advanced bodies, you don't expect anything, you know. You just give away for the benefit of many people. And you keep precept uh, for betterment of other sentient beings. You do not care, not for accumulating good deed, for betterment of other sentient beings then you do not tear line, not because you want to partake ma merit, or you want to get merit, but because you do not tear line, because you take care of other, you respect other sentient beings. You don't want to deceive other people. You know, it became advanced, you know. So, in this case, in this case, uh, if someone is doing dana sila bhavana, accompanied by taints and partaking of merit, partaking of merit me, wanting for merit. It's good in the normal level, it's good, right? 
Some people come to Tampe to accumulate good deed. It's good, but in advanced level, even such craving have to be removed. Right? The next one is ripening in the acquisitions. So that me ripening in the acquisition me, uh, you are creating for the accumulate, sorry, uh, for the uh, acquiring of five aggregates. So, so that me, if you do something, even the good deed, especially when you do good deed, you do with craving, craving. Just like a craving for nice existence, a better existence, craving for good deed. So, if you do something with the craving, with the clinging, then you will acquire fire aggregate in the future. So that is ubati uh, vipaka. So that me ripening and the acquisition. acquisition. So that me you acquire fire aggregate by having craving or clinging. So. So these are three terms uh, that the Buddha used in this soda to indicate the mundane right view. You think that dana sila bhavana, if you do dana, it's good, right? If you, go, uh, if you keep preset, good. If you meditate, good, that's right view. But when you do those good deeds uh, accompanied by taints, and uh, partaking of merit, you went for the merit. And ripening of the acquisition, that means you are, so you, because of craving and clinging, you are accumulating or acquiring fire aggregate uh, for the next uh, uh, existence. Next existence. So if you read the sodas, you will see these three terms, and you can look at page. Uh, look at the soda. Actually, I want you to bring the sodas because uh, it is important to read the soda. I will. Uh, I cannot explain everything. Then you look at uh, Mahachatarizka Soda, brand number six, brand number six. And what Beku is right view, I say, uh, right view, I say is twofold. The order that there is two types of right view. There is right view that is affected by taints partaking of merit, ripening in the acquisitions. This is a, uh, this is a mundane right view. Another one is, and there is right view that is noble, taintless, supramundane, and a factor of the path. So that me, when you do dana sila bhavana, you don't have any taints. To be to make it very simple, you don't have any craving and clinging. You do dana because because of compassion or loving kindness. You keep precept because of compassion and loving kindness. You meditate for uh, arriving of understanding or wisdom. That's all. There's no craving. You don't want or you, uh, there's no you don't want or you want. Just do it because it is necessary to do. So when you look at paragraph number six, you will understand to type of right view. 
So second one is a supra mundane right view. And the soda mentioned that. So that right view is no bad area, taintless, and now so what? Effect of the path, effect of the path. So that means we have the no way for path, right? The no way for path. So when you do good deed, whatever good deed you are doing, you do it based on the no way for path. I think for the time being, we are learning the right view, the right view, the facts, factor of the no way for path. After we after we learn all the eight, you will understand. Whatever you do, if you are doing with the no way for path, so that will be a factor of the path, the last one. So that will be supra mundane right view. Supra mundane right view. Actually, here I think to make a very simple between uh, mundane and supra mundane. We can differentiate only with the craving, you know, with the craving. If you do good deed, even you do good deed, you know, even you do good deed, two type, you do with the craving, accompanied by craving. Then you do good deed uh, without any craving, without any craving. Example. You get something to somebody, thinking that you will accumulate good deed. And by budget of this good deed, you have a good rebirth. With a craving, you know? Craving for good deed, craving for a good existence, a good rebirth. But you do good, uh, you get some, something to somebody, thinking that. He is in need of what you give. You give with the compassion. You know, in your mind, there's compassion to that person. He is in need of that. There is loving kindness in your mind. Because of based on loving kindness and compassion, you give. You don't have any craving, you know? You don't have any craving. There's two types of craving, you know? We can call it Monday and Supra Monday. Okay, question over there. Okay. So that is to say, if you are talking about the Lokia uh, Samaditi, yeah. so whatever merit you do is still zero, isn't it? Sorry, what about? So we have these two types of right views, right? The mundane and the Supra Mundane. Yeah. So that is to say that if you. Uh, have this supra mundane, sorry, if you have this mundane right view, that means any merit that you do is zero merit. Isn't it so? No, 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 I don't mean so. So, how many percent of merit are we talking about? 10%, 5%? Okay, <laughs> Thank very you. good question. Very good question. Actually, the merit here, me, the one is bonya, you know, the one is bonya. And uh, the opposite of Pounya is Apounya. Is Apounya is similar to Akusala. Akusala. Pounya is similar to Kusala. The merit of Hosan is similar, right? So actually, in other words, we call it Kama. Kama. Akusala, Kama. Kusala, Kama. You know? For that reason, in uh, in uh, in one of the so that the Buddha said that uh, we have three type of kriya vatu kriya vatu. Uh, sorry, ponya vatu ponya vatu. Ponya me the merit. Vatu me the base. So three type three bases for the acquiring of merit. So that uh, these are nothing but uh, dana, sila. Bhavana, right? Dana Sila Bhavana. So here, the merit here means the karma. So if you want to attain a bhana, you don't you have to uh, detach all these karma. So let's let's go back to the dependent originations. 
because of ignorance, sankhara arises, right? So when we learn sankhara, sankhara means the volition in the good and bad deed, you know, good and bad deed. Even the jhana, you know, even the jhana, even the jhanas are very good, but we call it sankhara, right? Sankhara. So that means all type of karma are sankhara. So, so you do those sankhara, and other you do karma because of ignorance. Because of ignorance. So if you do not have ignorance, so that means you have a wisdom or right view then you no longer create any karma. So you just do something without any craving, without any clinging. So in that way, you are on the path, on the no for path. In that sense, you are not creating any merit. You are not creating any merit. You are demolishing merit and demerit. Or you are demolishing Good deed and bad deed. You are demolishing wholesome deed and unwholesome deed. By doing so, you are demolishing Sankara. If you demolish Sankara, if there's no Sankara, there's no consciousness, right? No consciousness. If there's no consciousness, that means in the next existence. Next existence. If there's no consciousness, next existence, there will be no Nama Rupa. If there's no Nama Rupa, you know, no contact, no feeling, etc. So that will be the cessation of all type of suffering. That is called Nibbana, you know, Nibbana. So here, actually, to make it very, uh, to make it very clear, Ponya Bhagi Hayami are partaking of Ponya. Uh, Actually, actually, the one particular ponya, I think, uh, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think that it, it, uh, I don't know how to say, it, it carry actual meaning. So ponya bhagya me, you do something for the sake of merit. Ponya bhagya, for the sake of merit. I think it will be beautiful to translate for the sake of merit. You know, you do. Good deed, dana sila bhavana, for the sake of merit. You want to get merit. That's very important. You want a uh, craving. But of course, in the normal sense, you want to get merit. For that reason, you come to Tambe. It's good. It's good. But you want to, you, 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 you come to Tambe. Because you want to have a, a good rebirth, you know? So, if you have a merit, of course you will go around in sansara because you still have a craving and clinging, you know? You will still go around sansara. You may go to Deva, Deva Ram or you may go to even the Brahma Ram. It is within sansara. Any Ram, you know? 31 planes of existence is called suffering. You know. Even any type of happiness or any type of sensual pleasures in the heavenly realm, in human realm, is considered suffering. Because they are conditioned, sankha, uh, sankata, you know, they are conditioned. Our happiness in, uh, in the human realm is conditioned, it will change. And happiness in the heavenly realm also condition, it will change. So wherever has the nature of impermanence or change, is suffering, the Buddha said. Wherever is, uh, wherever has the nature of impermanence and suffering, it's called nonsense. A nature, dukkha, anatta. So, here actually, um, but of course, uh, if you do good deed, you will accumulate merit, merit. It is not a zero, <laughs> it's not a, of course you will get a lot, you know, you will get a lot. But if, if it is accompanied by taste, to make it very simple, if your good deed is accompanied by craving, 
and clinging, you cannot get out of samsara. That is what the uh, what the Buddha want to say. Two type of good deed. You know, two type of good deed. We can say that one good deed accompanied by clinging and craving. Another one, you do good things but without any craving and clinging. As I earlier said that you give away something out of compassion to that person. Not because you want to get good deed. So actually it is very different, you know, very different. Very different things. Any question? Okay. But actually this is very set a point, you know. For those who are new to this class, you may not understand fully because it is connected with the Dibana originations. Okay. Dante, can you uh, think in terms of mundane and supramundane? Sorry, right can you? View in terms of the purity of your intentions accompanying whatever you do. So that if it's mundane, right view with taints, obvi obviously that is accompanied by maybe not so pure intentions. Yeah, you're right. Intention is a second factor because so right view, right intention will arise. So I think later we will study three types of intention. So if you do something with the three types of intention, we can call it supra mundane right view, right intention. Supra mundane right intention. Right? very subtle, you know. <laughs> Sorry, so, so if, if you do not understand, uh, I think, uh, don't worry, I think if we link with the, f uh, uh, the nobody for path, I think you will have a better, a better understanding along the way, along the way. Because for the time being, we are learning just only one factor, you know, one factor. Okay, so I think, uh, to get better understanding, we we'll use commentary explanations. According to the commentary of this soda, Mahasattariska soda, and also Samadhi soda. So there are five type of right views. Five type of right views. Number one, Gamma Sakata Samadhi. This one is a mundane. This is a mundane one. Kama Sakata Samadhi. Right view that Kama produce it reset. So that me, if you do good, there will be good reset. If you do bad, there will be bad reset. You have a understanding in such a way. So that is right view. All beings are the owner of their own karma. If you do good, you are owner of good karma. If you do bad, you are owner of bad own karma. If I do good, I am owner of a good karma. If I do bad, I am the owner of my own karma. So if you have a such understanding, that's right view. S for the rising of right view in our life, it's not really easy, you know? Not really easy. Then bad consequences come to our life. Normally, we blame other people because we don't have a right view here, you know? Bad consequences in our life arises because of our karma, you know? We are owner of our own karma. Right? Owner of our own karma. So that is right view. So such right view is called the idea of ownership for karma. Later I will, I will talk about it. Normally, Buddhists, we have a 
ride you, you know. And outside of Buddhism, they don't believe, you know. They don't believe we are owner of our own camp. So we are, how do you say, the owner is the God. So here, the commentary mentioned example from the soda. So you can look at para number seven. Para number seven. <coughs> There is what is given. If you give, there will be the result of good. What is offered and what is sacrificed. So you believe uh, these are the good things. And there is fruit and result of good and bad actions. These are the karma, you know, or these are the karma, etc. You know, there are many things. So these are right view. No my right view, you know, no my right view. So according to commentary, so this is mundane right view. A meritorious factor that conjures to a favorable rebirth, but does not by itself transcend condition existence. So you have a right view that you do dana and sila and bhavana bhavana according to this soda that you do accompany by things accompany uh, partaking of merit for the sake of merit and also for um on um, continuity of fire aggregate right Chi aggregate so that is the mandating right view so that means you believe if you do good good can will come to you if you do bad, embarrassment will come to you. So that is uh, the ownership of our own camp. So that is a mundane right view, mundane right view. So this is a mainly connected with the camp, our action, hmm? our action. Sometimes such right view is called straightening out one's view. S to make it very simple, a straight view. So if you believe we are on our own karma, so that means you are view it straight, straight. Not only that, you have a straight view and clarity of faith in the karmas. Not only your karma, and the karma are the people, right? Sometime your beloved one died because of serious uh, fetal diseases, or maybe car accident. That is, he or she is on his own camera. Maybe because he's not careless. He is uh, he's careless because of that car accident. So if you do not have clarity of faith in the camera, you will cry. You will cry. If you have a right view, People are on all their own karma. Oh, my beloved one, he has such a karma, right view. Because of that, there's no crying. Even there's no sorrow. Very strong understanding, you know? It's, it's very difficult, very difficult. The more you have a understanding, the more you have a less suffering. So that is teachings of the Buddha, you know? Right view in this karma. Normally we cry if somebody uh, encounter a dying with the car accident. If he or she is our beloved one, you no? Know? We cry. Because we don't have a right view at that moment. We don't have a right view or the right view regarding with the karma. It's very, very hard, very hard. Tetichu Kama is another usage for the idea of ownership for Kama. Actually, in the uh, commentary, uh, normally give two names, Kama Sakata Sama Deity, 
or Kamaska Danyana. Actually, these are the same. These are the same. So the idea of ownership for karma. In other words, the knowledge of ownership for karma. So such uh, knowledge or right view is uh, stated in the pal in the sodas very often in this way. So the Buddha usually say, uh, if we have a right view or the knowledge of ownership for karma, and we understand in such a way, I am the owner of my karma, the heir of my karma. I have karma as my origin, karma as my relative, karma as my resort. I will be the heir of wherever karma, good or bad, that I do. If you have a such understanding, there's no sorrow, lamentation, no crying. If you encounter a bad incidences in your life, because you have a right view, you have a right view, the ownership for karma. <coughs> so actually, we can find in many places, the Buddha usually talk about the nature of karma. So this is a just a business and uh, business right view or knowledge about karma. And also, in, uh, we can substitute they are owner of their own karma. You are owner of your own karma. You can use whatever language. So we are uh, creator of our own destiny, creator of our own destiny. We create our own good and bad actions. The first right knowledge, the, the first right knowledge. Any question? Okay. Sorry, Bhante. The example that you've given about an accident involving someone very close to you, if say your, your, your father, mother, child is involved in an accident and dies, yeah. I think it's almost inhuman not to cry, not to show a reaction, because it's a natural reaction. And you cannot just say that that's your karma, you know? Is that taking ownership of the karma to the limit that your, your feelings as a human being is not taken care of? I, I don't know. Please. Very good question. Very good. Uh, not, not question, is it? How do you say that? Uh, discussion. Huh? discussion or, no? or contribution. But of course, for that reason, we call it mundane view. Because your view is mundane. Quite natural. Actually, I agree with you. Because uh, suppose uh, if, if our parents die in front of our eye, you know, with a car accident, maybe uh, the driver is very careless. Because of that, my parents die. Then, of course, I do not show my feeling. I'm very calm. Very calm, no cry, no sorrow. Then if there's no sorrow, if there's no sorrow, no suffering in my mind, I can deal with that problem very calmly in the right way. But of course it is it look like uh it look like uh how to say not normal human being. Bec for that reason, we call it supra mundane. Eh? <laughs> supra mundane. Eh? Of course, this is a very. Um, uh, don't forget that we are learning a very advanced teaching. No, I say human beings, we right away react. No, because of anger. We right away react because of greed. So anger, greed. Delusion, you know? So we have a anger and greed because we don't have a understanding 
or with them. In this case, we don't have a right view. Right view. So, if we have a right view at that moment, suppose my mother died because of car accident uh, in front of my eyes, then I have a right view. Right view. Wow. Uh, my mother is owner of her own camp. Then I approach. Then I approach to my mother. To my mother, without any sorrow. Then I, at that moment, I have a right view. You know, right view. Because of right view, I have a right intention. You know, right intention. So we have a three type of right intention. Right intention. Renunciation on letting go. I don't have any, uh, any, I want to say, attachment to my mother. Then another, another in good intention is a loving kindness. But of course, I, I love my mother. Loving kindness. I want to see good things about my mother. But now she died because of a car accident. I can't do that. Then I can't revive, you know, revive. The another thing, another good intention is a uh, compassion. Then I have a compassion of Karuna toward my mother because he died, she died. Then I also have loving kindness or compassion toward the driver. He's careless, of course, because of that he drive, uh, he killed my mother. Then, uh, but of all, I can, I can deal that problem in the right way without any emotion, you know, without any emotion and reaction. If the driver is uh, wrong, then I can, uh, I can, how to say, I will solve that problem with a full of mindfulness and full of right understanding. So, without any sorrow, and also, if, if there's no sorrow, no happiness in my mind. Just calmly and it's not really easy. But of course, I'm just giving the example, uh, not really easy. But if, if um, Nuratana, especially here, Nuratana and Arahan will be able to deal with the, such a mindfulness, and serenity, not normal people, you know, not normal people. Normally, most of the time, we are dealing such a problem. We are solving those problems full of emotion, you know, full of anger, full of greed and attachment. Because of that, we have a lot of followers sufferings, sufferings. Okay. So I think here, in this case, only Nuratana, Anagami, and Erhan able to solve such problem in such a way. I mean, just giving the example, you know. <laughs> I say normal people is very hard, kind of, honestly, not able to solve such problem. Um, actually, Bante, my question is the same as his, and I generally take the same view as him. Um, I think if I see a beloved one being knocked down by a car in my eyes, I will fe the feeling will be there. Definitely will feel sad. Um, but the acceptance, of course, will be there because there's nothing more you can do, right? Mm. But the feeling, and that's the part, you see, you know, and I, I find it very hard uh, to find that equilibrium between not really not having that feeling, being passionless. I wouldn't use the word in you may not use the word passionless as taught in the suttas. Being passionless and then yet on the other hand, we have to continue to have compassion and kindness for other people. So where do you strike that equilibrium? You see, so to me that is the difficulty, but uh, of course I'm not an arahant, but you know, but even but just using the thinking mind to be passionless, you know, to acceptance can come. E actually, 
There's nothing you can do. You basically just have to accept it, even on the spot. It can if come. you accept it, that's the right deal. Yeah, but mm. the feeling, you know, the feeling is will definitely be there. Um, don't, so don't use the word feeling. Emotional emotion. feeling. Emotion. Right? Okay, passionate. Maybe we can use the word together. You know? Can I use emotional the feeling? <laughs> emotional feeling. Definitely, yeah. the emotion will be there. Yeah. Um, so it's it's not how. Do you strike that equilibrium between being passionless, frankly, and yet on the other hand, you know, we have to continue to have compassion and matter to other people, you see. And, you know, sometimes I think about if I am passionless, you know, what does it make me? Um, it's quite a sorry person, you know. I <laughs> yeah, I understand because uh, we are thinking based on our own emotion because the nature of our emotion is such that uh, we react with the uh, anger and we, we, we react with the, uh, how to say, ruthless, ruthlessness. But here, what, I'm, what I want to say is, even though we are not a rehan, even though we are non retain even though we are not non retainer and we can imitate what, the, what they do, what they do, then... Uh, when the Bora encounter, someone is causing him, someone is shouting him with the full of anger, he listen mindfully, quietly. Can we do that? But sometimes we can do that if we have a right view and right understanding. So at that moment, we are similar to Arahan. We are similar to the Buddha. For that reason, it's not really easy, but we can do that. Sometimes, I think, uh, um, especially the politicians, you know, they're very, they are very calm. They do not show their anger in their face, at least in their face. You know? But I don't know in their mind. But of course, in, if in their mind, if there's no anger, Toward the person who is shouting and accusing baselessly. Just just listen patiently because he knows everything and he has all the information. They are accusing, you know, the people are accusing him baseless without any base. He knows that he has all the information in his mind. So with the right view, with the understanding, they are blaming me because they do not know the correct information. That's the right view, you know. If he or she has a, such a right understanding or right view, we're not free angry toward the person who is shouting and complaining, you know. So actually, in this case, we are not a rehan, we are not non retana we have hatred, we have a greed, but if we are mindful, if we have a right view, and right intention will come. Right intention doesn't mean, actually here, even though I don't have any anger, the moment I saw that my mother died with the car accident, even though I don't have anger, I will have a, all my activity, all my actions will be full of energy. Then I, I will take necessary Actions for that. That doesn't mean I'm impassionless. I don't have anger. Actually, my uh, how do you, my motivation is not driven by anger, not driven by greed or attachment to my mother. My activities, my actions, is motivated by understanding, right view, and motivated by compassion and loving kindness. So these three are called um uh these three are called right intention. So if I'm doing with the right intention, then my speech, my speeches and my actions will not go wrong. So my speeches, my actions will be right. So here the most important is the right view, you know, right view. Of course, it's not, not actually, we, we take a very extreme example. Very difficult, you know? Suppose, um, 
you are a politician. Suppose we will take another scenario, no? You are a politician. And you know you have all the information. Then you will do something that people will not like. And people will uh, criticize and blame in the newspapers. Then you know because you do, because this is the right thing to do, but people will not like it. Suppose increase a Mardi price. <laughs> <laughs> but if they do not increase and uh, the, uh, the government will not uh, get a lot of, you know, a lot of income and they have all the information, if they increase such amount and they will cover the cost. But people doesn't know the information and they will blame them, they will criticize. Why is the government doing that, you know? Then in the crowds, they will shout to the, even to the minister, you know? If minister has a right understanding or right view, he will not feel any, any anger. Mindfully, and he will reply to questions. So he will entertain all the criticism and complaints. So it's not really easy. It needs right view. No? Right view come first. Only you have a right view, right intention will come, follow. If there's a right intention or right thought in your mind, wherever you speak, wherever you, you, you do, will be right. So for that reason, it's very important to understand the noble eightfold path. So if you are walking on the path, it will lead to a ultimate happiness on Nibbana. Okay, question. Uh, Bhante, can I uh, say example of my case? Mm -mm. Because of the accident, mm, what should I say? Um, until today, I still have compassion for the 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 horse cart rider. Okay. Yeah. So until today, I still don't. I have no hatred against them. Mm. So, uh, despite I'm still having pain, so can I say I am having the right view? I mean, uh, sort of like uh, the right uh, noble evil path. You're right. You're right because you have a right view that uh, if you uh, if you follow suit, right suit. Yeah. Am I correct? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't I mean, sue them you, all this. I mean, if you follow suit, uh, the horse cart rider will get into trouble. They are poor. Because of compassion, you do not do that. Yeah. Then, based on right view, you have a compassion. So I think that that's, that's the right things. But uh, if you think that they are very careless, it is not wrong to take action, not wrong to take action. It is up to your choice. You know. No, it, even if, uh, if it's, uh, they are careless, but I will still not sue them. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I see no point. I see. Mm. Yeah. So that is considered right view, right? Or compassion. <laughs> Sometime. So sometime we need to take action. Sometime we need to take action. So we have to, how to say. Uh, it depends, it depends, it depends. Sometimes we need to, how do you say, we need to tell them it's not right to do. It's not right, it's not right to do. Then if you think such a right understanding, suppose you, you follow suit, then, am I correct? Uh, go to the court, you know? Yeah. Then you, uh, you, you follow suit and they have to they go to jail, you know. Then in that way, they will have a better, better understanding. 
in future they have to be very careful, very careful. So you, uh, so if you have a, such a right attitude, there's nothing wrong. But if you do something uh, with the hatred or resentment, may not be good. Okay. So okay, any Bhante. any question? Okay. Any question? One hundred percent correct. Determine with the three terms, accompanied by tense, accompanied by um, how do you say, particular for the sake of merit, for the sake of merit, and uh, something without any craving and clinging, that can be. Supramantai one. But I forgot according to Abhidharma, according to Abhidharma, if we are not four noble persons, Ariya Pokala, we, we call it uh, mundane, no? Mundane. Okay, so next one is called Vipassana Samadhiti. This is a, what the commentary said uh, Vipassana Samadhiti. Right view or insight, which investigates physical and mental formations or physical or mental phenomena as impermanence and nature, suffering, dukkha, and non self and nata. So, this is a insight. So, suppose you have a concentration, then you investigate. Uh, mental and physical phenomena in terms of impermanence, in terms of suffering and non self. So, such a understanding is called insight right view, the right view of insight. Suppose someone dies, then you understand that everything is impermanent. So that will be. Vipassana Samadhi, the right view of insight, because you investigate uh, physical phenomena in terms of a nature, in terms of a nature. So this is very powerful. It's very powerful, more powerful than the first one. Especially is the right view or understanding. Someone die, you understand that everyone have to die. You know? Everybody is impermanent, the nature of impermanence. Right now you are happy, then after a while, you are not that happiness gone. Impermanent, you no? Know? Impermanent. So that is the insight right view. So that means you investigate or you contemplate the nature of mental and physical phenomena. Uh in uh in a way, uh, uh, how do you say, in terms of a nature, dukkha, and nata. That is called a uh, vipassana samadhi. So it is a conceptual and intellectual understanding of the Four Noble Truths. You do not understand Four Noble Truths with the path or maga, or with the fruition or phala. You just understand Four Noble Truths, suffering as a suffering. The original suffering as the original suffering, etc. Intellectually. Now we are learning, we understand uh, mental and physical phenomena impermanent. So that is Vipassana Samadhi. So intellectually or conceptually. For that reason, uh, uh, number one and number two are mundane uh, right view. It's called mundane right view. It is also called the knowledge which is in conformity with the Four Noble Truths. Sacha Nulo Manyana. The knowledge which is in, uh, in conformity with the knowledge. 
So if you have a such intellectual knowledge, it is in, conf uh, in conformity with knowing the Four Noble Truths, with the Magga and Phala. It's in accordance with uh, the knowledge or the Magga and Phala. In the Maha Sattarizika Soda, so the commentary mentioned that uh, Paragraph number 4, 10, 60, 22, and 29, 28, and we can find this one. One understands wrong view as a wrong view, and right view as a right view. This is, uh, how to say, one's right view. So actually, when, um, in that paragraph, uh, the Buddha want to say what is right view. Right view me. Wrong view, you, you, you understand wrong view as a wrong view. Killing, killing is good, that's a wrong view. So wrong view as a wrong view, and right view as a right view, you understand. So that is a right view. And also, you understand wrong intention as a wrong intention. And right intention as a right intention. And also you understand uh, wrong speech as a wrong speech, and right speech as a right speech. So actually, according to commentary, that is second right, second type of right view, the right view of insight. Actually, here, when you look at uh, the nature of commentary, they're trying to, how to say, fit in, you know? They, they're trying to, how to say, squeeze in you know? eye. Uh, to suit their interpretation, you know, interpretation. Very, sometimes very hard to understand. So anyway, uh, for that reason, we shouldn't, uh, how to say, we shouldn't faith 100% to the commentary explanations. We have to see with the, uh, with the, I want to say the scrutiny on, right? With the, we have to see it very carefully, very carefully. So I'm not blaming commentaries. The commentaries are very important to have a better understanding. But sometimes sometime it's weird. You know? It's sometimes weird, you know, just like here. So anyway, just for the knowledge. So here, according to commentary, second right view is the right view of insight. So insight here, me, we personal me, you investigate, uh, mental and physical phenomena, I say a nature, toka, and That is the right view. <coughs> Question? Okay. So let's go back to the right view. Right view in the Vipanga Soda. <coughs> so the Buddha said that. What is right view? the knowledge of suffering, the knowledge of the origin of suffering, the knowledge of the cessation of suffering, the knowledge of the way leading to cessation of suffering. So that means the knowledge of four noble truths. That is the right view. So this right view can be two, two type, according to commentary. So the first one is the right view of insight, right? The right view of insight which is in conformity with Four Noble Truths. Then, number three is called Magga Samadhi, right view of the path, which arises as a result of insight. Then you have a right view, or uh, you understand Four Noble Truths. You understand suffering as a suffering. The origin of suffering as the origin of suffering. Understanding Four Noble Truths is called right view. So in this case, understanding Four Noble Truths with the path of Magga, the moment you attain Magga. Then the fourth one is Phala Samadhi. The right view of the fruit which follow after the path. After you attain the path, Magga, then follow 
uh, the fruit of phala. So that is uh, right view of the fruit of phala. The commentary mentions the path maka, the fruit phala, with the following sentence from the soda. In one of the right view, right intention comes into being. In one of the right view, right intention comes into being. So that here, right view me, you will right view about for noble truth. If you have a right view or understanding for noble truth, your intention will be right, according to commentary. The first one, the first right view connected with the camera. Second one, inside right view. And third one, Maga. And fourth one, Phala. And the fifth one is Pachawakana Samadhiti. The right view of reviewing knowledge. Right view of reviewing knowledge. So according to commentary, it is nothing but right knowledge. Right knowledge. It is the reviewing knowledge of all the finance one has destroyed. Suppose if you attain Mega and Fala, you already destroyed all the defilements, all the things. Then you review what you have destroyed or what you have removed. That is called Pachavakana Samadhi. You review it, you review them. It is shown in the paragraph, part number 34 and 35. Actually, just go back to the soda. <coughs> part number 35, 34. Actually, we already learned uh, that in Baku's right view can fast. And how does Right view come first. In one of the right view, right intention comes into being. If you have a right view, right intention will come. If you have a right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, right concentration will come. In one of the right concentration, right knowledge comes into being. Right knowledge. So if you have a right concentrations, you will have a right knowledge. So if you have a right knowledge and right liberation will come. Right liberation will come. <coughs> so according to that paragraph, that's that's Bekus, the path of disciple in higher training possesses eight factors. It factor me from the right view to right concentration. The error hand possesses 10 factors. Error hand possesses 10 factors. That means error hand possesses 10, all the 10, including the last two. So this is a, a very beautiful soda. If you carefully read this soda, you will understand how the noble full path are connecting each other. How they walk, how they walk. Among them, right view can fast. Very important. The right view meet everything. You know? Right right view uh, have an understanding as a right view as a right view, wrong view as a wrong view. Right intention as a right intention because of right view. Round speech as a round speech. Normally, even though we are speaking in a bad speeches, we do not understand, no? Because we don't have a right view, right view. So everything based on the right view. <coughs> then uh, I want to use uh, um, another explanation uh, given by Sarah Usilananda uh, in his book, uh, a discourse on setting in motion the will of the Dharma, the first sermon, Dhamma Chaka Bodhana Soda. 
So in that small book, I said that this one. The first factor, right understanding, he used the word right understanding, Sama deity. Normally, deity me view. You are view, not understanding. But I, for that, you know, Sen scholar, they use the word right understanding. Actually, according to uh, Maga Sanyoda, the first soda from the Maga Sanyoda, so the Buddha said that uh, uh, truth knowledge confess, no? So because of truth knowledge, you have a sense of shame. You will have a uh, fear of wrongdoing. Then after that, you will have a right view. So truth knowledge, wait hear me, understanding. So anyway here, he used the word right understanding. Sama deity. Very close, very close. But I think right view will be better. But he went to y he he meet the right view, no? Sama deity. And the facts factor, right understanding or right view goes through all three stages. Three stages. Then according to commentary, five stages, right? Five stages. The first one, understanding of the law of karma. So this is the basic part. Path. Actually, we have learned that uh, the knowledge of ownership for karma. We are owner of our own karma. The first one, understanding of the law karma. And second one, understanding of the true nature of things during during vipassana meditation. So when you meditate, you understand mental phenomena, they arise as they pass away. That is inside meditation. They are suffering, they are non safe. So this third level, or second level, sorry. He used the word preliminary path. Preliminary path. So that me in conformity with Four Noble Truths, you know, understanding Four Noble Truth. And the last one, understanding of the Four Noble Truth at the moment of enlightenment. So that me, at the moment, you are day Maga and Fala. Actually, it's easier to remember, you know. So the first one, you must understand the law of karma. We are, and everybody is, owner of our own karma. And second one, so we must have an inside knowledge or understanding that everything is a nature, dukkha, and atta. So in other words, we call it conceptual understanding or intellectual understanding. Then number three is actual understanding. Understanding the Four Noble Truths at the moment of enlightenment, the moment you take Magha and Fala. Question? Okay, okay, question. Of uh, Silananda, where does the right view of insight come in? Number two, number two. Number two. Understanding the true nature of things. During vipassana meditation, vipassana insight. Vipassana in Bali and English insight. Okay, then um, let's go to next soda, Samadhi soda. <coughs> oh, another question. Okay. Pante, um, I want to ask about the sequence of the right view. Does it mean that usually? One will have to say go through the mundane right view and then maybe through the practice of vipassana meditation we understand the vipassana right view and then one then can progress to the supra mundane right view. Yeah, you're right, you're right. But actually Understanding the nature of karma is quite basic, quite basic, quite basic. But 
inside right view, it can be both, you know, it can be both. Monday, uh, that one in conformity with, it's very, very near to the, uh, the rear, the rear enlightenment or rear right view, the right view. You're right, yeah. So, stay up question, no. Then uh, let's let's go to uh, some more deity soda. Majmani Kaya Soda number nine. This one, some deity. Some deity me right view. So if you understand right view, you must understand this one. Before that, I want to share uh, what the Buddha say regarding with Venerable Sadi Buddha. And the Buddha usually say in many places. Saripoda because is able to announce, teach, describe, establish, reveal, expound, and establish the four noble truth. Actually, we, we can find many synonyms of he, he is able to teach, you know, the noble eightfold part, uh, four noble truths. So that me, he is very intelligent. And he is the most intelligent man next to the Buddha. In many places, so the Buddha usually uh, prays Venerable Sariputta in such a way. That me, Samadhi Soda is taught by Venerable Sariputta. He's very wise, and whatever he say is uh, in according with what the Buddha said. For that reason, uh, according to the first commentary of Diga Nikaya, 2000 Damakanda from Bali Canon are the Watot disciples. And the rest of 82,000 discourses are taught by the Buddha himself. We have a uh, 84,000 discourses. Uh, not, not discourses, 80, 84,000 the group of discourses. The mechanical, aggregate, aggregate of discourses, or the group of discourses, 84,000. And then, then 82,000 are taught by the Buddha, and 20,000 are taught by the disciples. Just like this soda. Samadhi, so, sorry? Sorry, 2000. Uh, 2000, sorry. 2000 are taught by the disciples, just like a Venerable Sari Buddha, Venerable Mokulana, and Bhikkhuni Kema, and Bhikkhuni Dhammadena, etc. Even the lay people, you know? So there, is, there was a very famous Tamas speaker at the time of the Buddha called Cheta. He been he he, he even uh, gave a Tamas talk to the a group of monks, you know, very famous. So here, Samadhi Soda is taught by the Venerable Sari Buddha. Then, normally, the commentary give is simile. Normally, then I will give you the they say that example. All the announcement from the government, especially Prime Minister office, you will see a lot of announcement, right? A lot of announcements. Do you think that, Mr. Li, uh, Li Xinlong, right? Or this one? No. The people behind, they write, right? The Mr. Li Xinlong sigh. From that moment he sighed, it became his announcement. So just like that, uh, there are many discourses taught by the disciple or the Buddha, and the approach to the Buddha, and I have taught this Dhamma talk in, in such a place. Is it correct? The Buddha say, yes, you're right. If I were you, I would say the same thing. So from that moment on, it became the word of the Buddha. Even though 2000 disc, uh, the group of discourses 
are taught by disciples of the Buddha, we consider as a daughter of the Buddha. We got, they got approval from the Buddha, right? Approval from the Buddha. Just like Prime Minister, Prime Minister Li Quan, uh, Li Xinlong, he didn't write, you know? He will not write everything. He just signed, you know? So from that time on what? His announcement, right? Same thing. Even though he's taught by Venerable Sari Bodha, it's considered as the teachings of the Bodha. So now I, want to, I want you to say that it's important. It's considered as the teachings of the Bodha. Teachings of the Bodha. <coughs> because everything in the Soda are uh, in accordance with um, teachings of the Bodha. <coughs> the name of the Soda is called Samadhiti. Samadhiti me, right view. Samadhiti Soda explain the way to liberation through the application of right view with the 16 headings. 60 headings. It uses the Four Noble Truths as a framework to analyze them. So there are 60 headings in this soda. So they are analyzed under the light of Four Noble Truths. I think later I will explain. So what are the 60 headings? Number one, karma. The whole sand and the root of a whole sand. The whole sand and the root of whole sand. Number one. Number two, nutriment. Nutriment. <coughs> I think let's read number number one. I let, Let's read number one first. Part number three. Part number three. Please look at the soda. Part number three. Actually, Venerable Sariboda is talking to the mains and he's talking about right view. Part number three. When friends, nobody disciple understands the right, uh, the whole sand, and the root of and whole sand. The whole sand and the root of the whole sand. In that way, he is one of the right view. So that me, if you understand and whole sand, I say and whole sand. And the root of and whole sand, I say the root of and whole sand. And whole sand as a whole sand, the root of whole sand as a the root of whole sand. That is right view. Actually, that's very important. That's very important. If we have, actually, the soda said that, <coughs> uh, unwavering confidence. If you have unwavering confidence in the nature of karma, that we are on our own karma. You have an unwavering confidence or faith in the karma. There's no suffering. There's no suffering. In the case of our mother dying because of car accident, if we have unwavering faith in the karma, <laughs> there's no suffering at all. You know, our action will be motivated by right view. And right intention. In the right intention, there's no negative mental state like anger. There's no selfish gr uh, greed, you know. But of course, it's not easy. <laughs> Only Nuratana and the Buddha, you know, Arahan, we have such. But we can imitate, you know. We can imitate the Buddha and Nuratana. <coughs> So th th that is called karma. <coughs> so then, second one is the nutriment. Nutriment. Then number three, suffering, or the four noble truths. The 
the dependent originations mentioned, you know, Dukkha Khanda Sasamuriya Hodi, all mass of suffering arises, you know, suffering, and then suffering is mentioned in the dependent originations. The next one, aging and death. So the main cause of suffering, the frightening cause of suffering, and aging and death. We are afraid of, afraid to die, you know? That's suffering, that's suffering. If you don't have any fear to die, no suffering, no suffering. Aging and death is mentioned in the different originations. Then aging and death arises because of birth. Birth arises because of existence. Existence arises because of clinging. Clinging arises because of craving. Craving arises because of feeling. Feeling arises because of contact. Contact arises because of six sense spaces. Six sense spaces arises because because of mind and body. A mind and body arises because of consciousness. Consciousness arises because of Come up formation, or volitional formation. Volitional formation arises because of ignorance. But don't think that ignorance is the first cause of everything. Do not think that. Ignorance also another cause. Its cause, that is, taints. Taints. Actually, taints are very, very important to understand. Actually, uh, the taints have a two definition, two definition. It is similar to the liquors kept in the in the body for a long time. Even though you drink all the liquor from the body, you can st still smell it because it has been fermented for a long time, you know? Long time. Taints. Because of taints, ignorance arises. So these are the six sixty headings, you know, sixty headings. So actually, almost everything are stated in the dependent originations, dependent originations. But only gamma. Also, we can put it gamma into sankara, right? Gamma formation. And nutriment, and you can put nutriment and. Uh, Maybe uh, contact, etc. Right? Contact, etc. Or we can put under craving. And taints also can be put into uh, craving, etc. You know? Craving, etc. Sixty headings. Even though the soda is very long, it mentions uh, the factors. Mentioned in the uh, dependent originations, right? Dependent originations. Supra mundane right view. The commentary of this soda, Samadhi soda, mentioned that right view in this soda is a supra mundane one, not a mundane one. Referring to the opening and closing was of each session. So we have a 60 headings, right? At the end of these sessions, each session, uh, we have a opening word and closing word. So by looking at these uh, opening and closing words, uh, the commentary make a final conclusion that Samadhi sort of talk about supra mundane right view. Supra mundane right view. So let's see opening opening was part number three part number three is mentioned that uh, you have a uh, right view uh, and whole sand as it and whole sand the root of and whole sand as it the root of and whole sand whole sand whole sand the root of whole sand as it the root of whole sand that is a right view in that way he is one of the right view, one of the right view, 
who view is straight, straight. Normally our view is not straight. Sometimes right, sometimes wrong, <laughs> not straight. But here is a straight. Who has unwavering confidence in the Dhamma? You cry because no confidence in the camera, you know? No confidence in the camera. Here, actually, and we are in confidence in the Dhamma. There's no, uh, there's no doubt about Dhamma, you know? Teachings of the Buddha. You talk about Sotapanna, you know? And has arrived at this two Dhamma. So these opening words indicate the quality of a stream in Tara and one's pratana. Actually here, stream in Tara remove, uh, remove doubt about triple gems, you know? Any doubt about, there's no any doubt about teachings of the Buddha. But here the Buddha say, right view, you must understand wrong view as a wrong view. Uh, and whole sign as a and whole sign, you know? And the root of an ocean, I say the root of an ocean. The Buddha talk about it. But he has a right view. He has a full confidence what the Buddha say. That me only strip in Tara, you know? Not normal people. But of course, sometimes we have a faith. Sometimes we don't have. That's the nature of you know, our view, you know, the, the nature of our view. So I think here, you look at uh, Parana number four. So Parana number four, the Buddha talk about what are the and whole sand, you know? Actually, we have already learned uh, three type for uh, wrong, I want to say the wrong bodily actions and four type of wrong Variations and three type of or uh, three mental action. These are the unwholesome. What are the root? The root of unwholesome. Para number five. Para number five. Nobody look at the soda. <laughs> Para number five. Greed, hate, hatred, and delusion. Loba dosa moha. So they are the root of unwholesome. And para number six, and uh, what are the whole sign? The opposite of a whole sign is the whole sign. Very easy. So what are the, the root? The root? Non greed. Non greed. In other words, it is called letting go or renunciation. Non hatred. In other words, we call it loving kindness. And also, compassion. And non delusion, in other words, we call it wisdom or understanding, right? So these are the root of wholesome. Actually, this soda talk about many things, you know? It's important, very important soda to talk to, to know about right view. So this is the opening words. If you look at here, a straight view and wavering faith or confidence in the Dharma, so that me the quality of a stream in Tara or one's retina. Sometimes we can imitate uh, the nature of stream in Tara and one's retina, right? Then, closing was, he entirely abandons underlying tendency to lust, underlying tendency to aversion, and underlying tendency to view, and can see I am by abandoning ignorance, arousing true knowledge, he here and now makes an end of suffering. So that means if there's no lobadosa moha, then there's no suffering. Actually, the closing ones indicate the quality of non retana and arahan. When we look at abandoning ignorance, that means arahan. For that reason, the commentary make a final conclusion. So the right view in this soda talk about uh, supra mundane right view, not normal right view. So anyway, by studying 
supra mundane right view, we can understand uh, how to say mundane right view as well. And we can try to uh, develop our understanding or right view as a and whole sand as a and whole sand. Killing is not good. That's a right view. Stealing is not good, right view. Telling lie is not good, right view. But sometimes you'll be wrong view, telling lie is good. <laughs> but at that moment no right view. <laughs> then you steal something. At that moment no right view. Because of no right view, wrong view, based on wrong view, your intention will be wrong, your speeches, your action, your livelihood will be wrong, or your effect, mindfulness, concentration will be wrong. Then because of wrong concentrations, you will have a wrong knowledge, wrong knowledge. Then because of wrong knowledge, wrong liberation. Follow, you know, if something's wrong, everything will be wrong. Above all, the most important thing is right view. For that reason, the Buddha say, right view can fast. Right view is nothing but wisdom or understanding. Okay, any question? Okay, one question, please. Uh, Bante, just like to check about what do we mean by arrive at the at this true Dharma? You know, just now you mentioned about the three components of super Bante view. The last one is has arrived at this true Dharma. And how do you achieve that? Is it true? What what do you mean by that? Actually, in that scene, <coughs> if you look at uh, part number three, but um. If you look at Paran number four, right? Paran number four, the Buddha talk about unwholesome actions, you know? Ten type of unwholesome actions. The Buddha said these are unwholesome. What the Buddha says is true dharma. Then Paran number five, the Buddha talk about the root of those unwholesome actions, Loba Dosa Moha. The Buddha said they, they are the root of unwholesome. What the Buddha said is truth, true dharma. And but at number six, the Buddha talk about uh, wholesome actions, wholesome actions. So they are truth, you know, they are truth. And also in but at number seven, the Buddha talk about the root of those wholesome actions. They are truth. But then my question is, what do you mean by arrive? Arrive at this true Dharma. Oh, arrive. Does it mean understand or well, you practice, you know, the true Dharma or in depth understanding about the Dharma? Oh, okay, let me see yeah. the arrive, original. Arrival. Okay. Let me check. has arrived at this two dharma. So that means uh, we have a right understanding, number one, based on right understanding or wisdom, we have a right view. If you have a right view, you have a right conclusion, a right conclusion to something, no? to something. You have arrived right conclusion. Is it the same as true knowledge of the Dharma? So that uh, means it's not just theory Dharma. How to say, uh, arrive at this true Dharma me, actually to make it very simple, uh, if I have a right understanding and right view about the nature of karma, the nature of karma, then I will have a right intention, right speed, right action, right etc. Up to right, uh, right knowledge and right liberation. So those right knowledge, right liberation arrive at to my mind. 
arrive at. Is it like inside? That means you yeah, yeah, gain yeah. insight Understanding to, come to, to me. what is Dharma to about, it, uh, to what is Four Noble Truths and through the Eightfold Path. That means it's true insight. Yeah, true, it, it's like true insight, understanding right? arrive in your mind. It, that, that is a metaphor. It's not, suppose, uh, understanding come to my mind. Like this, like this. Arrive at Agato, Agato, Satamain. It, it came. Uh, Bhante, is that what you call absolute truth? The truth that cannot be challenged? Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Absolute truth, nobody cannot challenge. It is mentioned in previous soda, uh, uh, Mahachatarizika soda. Uh, actually, you, you look at, uh, at the end of uh, Majjama Nikaya 117, nobody cannot challenge. Truth, truth, dharma. Okay, so I mean the truth dharma came to came to me. It doesn't in me. Truth dharma came to me. Metaphor is metaphor. Okay, so thank you, and we will close the session. Yo vara tam bava ro manu jesu sakya muni pagava kata kecho para kato bala vidya samanki Tansu ka tansa ra na tamu pe mi Ya ka vi ra ka ma ninja ma so ka Dhamma ma sangata ma pa te Marurami mampaku nansu vipatan Tamami mansaranatamu pemi Yatachade nama apalamahu Chattu su su si su puri sa yuge su Atta cha po gala tamma ta sa te Sangha mi man sa ra na ta mu pe mi Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu Good night, everyone.